ke ja diabetic neuropathy you all know diabetes uh, causes a wide range of acute and uh, chronic uh, neuropathies and it uh, most uh, prevalent uh, and most uh, Uh, debilitating and uh, costly complications of diabetes is a diabetic neuropathy and uh, we know about this diabetic neuropathy is a presence of symptoms and or signs of nerve dysfunction in people with diabetes after other causes have been excluded so that is important there there may be patients having diabetes diabetes with the uh, p12 deficiency or alcohol or vasculitis these should be excluded to make it diabetic neuropathy the incidence of uh, neuropathy is roughly around 50 to 60 it is more in type 1 diabetes and you all know it is most disabling complications of uh, diabetes and has impact on the functional capacity and the quality of life and it causes much suffering in patient with diabetes and uh, one of the important uh, major cause of morbidity and mortality at it leads leading risk factor for foot ulceration and lead to 50 to 75% the non traumatic amputations of limbs without the proper uh, foot care so next we'll move on to risk factors what are the risk factors of diabetic neuropathy the poor glycemic control and the duration of diabetes is the single most important risk factor for diabetic neuropathy and there are other uh, risk factors also being overweight as is obesity hyperlipidemia hypertension and kidney disease as are the metabolic syndromes and lifestyle factors like smoking alcohol is also one of the all are important cause for the uh, cause the factor for the neuropathy especially in type 1 diabetes glycemic the uh, hyperglycemia and the duration of diabetes is important uh, but in, in type 2 diabetes all other factors play a part in the pathogenesis of uh, diabetic neuropathy but in type 1 only main risk factor is uh, hyperglycemia and when we move on to the classification of diabetes neuropathy there are the various classifications uh, of diabetic neuropathy some divide into acute and chronic some divide into uh, focal multifocal or diffuse symmetric so there are different different classification here we will go into a small classification like diffuse neuropathy where we first one is the distal symmetric peripheral neuropathy is a length dependent uh, axonal type of neuropathy this is the most common form in diabetes uh, second uh, diffuse uh, type of neuropathy is autoimmune diabetic autoimmune neuropathy then the focal one it may be mono neuropathy or mono neuritis multiplex the mono neuritis uh, uh, or present like isolated cranial nerves or isolated peripheral nerve uh, problem or it may be multiple uh, asymmetric uh, nerve in all the disease a mononeuritis multiplex and the uh, diabetes also present with acute diabetic neuropathy like radiculoplexus neuropathy some kind of thoracic radiculopathy and treatment induced neuropathy and there are other categories diabetic neuropathy cachexia these are acute type of presentation whereas our diffuse neuropathy usually long standing diabetic people with Uh, develop that is a chronic uh, neuropathy condition and this is the other uh, non diabetic neuropathy is common in diabetes usually uh, some of the neuropathic uh, condition present in diabetes but it is not due to diabetes like pressure palsy uh, uh, saturday night palsy of food drop of uh, of um, claw hand in uh, in alana palsy and cadp another uh, non diabetic neuropathy but present more more in diabetes and some of the radiculopathy is also common in diabetes then we'll move on to diffuse neuropathy mainly the distal symmetric polyneuropathy this is the commonest uh, form of neuropathy this is what we are may, when you call it diabetic neuropathy it actually it is indirectly say it is a distal symmetric polyneuropathy dspa it may be if the if the uh, uh, 
uh, nerve, uh, primarily small uh, fibers, that is small uh, myelinated or unmyelinated fibers primarily affected, but it's primarily small fiber neuropathy. Or if the large fibers are affected, it comes primarily large fiber neuropathy. Uh, most of the time it's mixed, primary, small fiber and the large fiber is mixed, causing the uh, distal symmetric for neuropathy. And the other uh, diffuse type of neuropathy, axonal type of the autonomic neuropathy, where, where, where which organ is affected, whether it is uh, affecting the cardiovascular system, then the symptoms are different, you know, uh, they are presenting with the postural hypertension, lightheadedness and erectile dysfunction and uh, exercise uh, intolerance like that, uh, how it would affect the cardiovascular system. If it is affected, and then it affects the gastrointestinal, urogenital, pseudomotors, and it also also causes hypoglycemic unawareness. So the symptoms are depend on which particular organ is affected, and the symptoms uh, depend on uh, the usually autonomic neuropathy is uh, again it is like a long standing. You have a long standing diabetes, you get this thing, this complication. Then we will move on to distal symmetric polyneuropathy, that is DSPN. This is the commonest form of diabetic neuropathy. It may, some people, prefer, it may be asymptomatic and usually develop insidiously and maybe in 20% in, in of the diabetic uh, type 2 diabetes present at initial stage, but you know, on, on diagnosis, they have uh, these symptoms. And it is symmetrical uh, distal uh, form of sensory predominant neuropathy. And usually start with numbness and a tingling of toes and feet and slowly spread proximally over the months to years. And then you, they may get a pricking sensation, burning, aching sensation. These are the positive uh, symptoms. And then sometimes they present with the negative symptoms like numbness and loss of sensation. And usually when the symptoms approach uh, or mid half or, or the, the, then they start uh, numbness or tingling sensation appear in the fingertips. Because it's a length dependent uh, axonal neuropathy, it first affects the uh, leg and starting with the toe, tips of the toes, and then it progresses upward. Then, once it come up to the uh, mid calf or thigh, then it start uh, symptom start in the fingertips. And uh, in severe cases, symptoms affect whole extremities, and it is a major cause of disability and uh, reduced quality of life. And it's a most feared complication. Uh, the most feared complication of this distal symmetric neuropathy is the foot alteration. And this leads to amputation. And not only that, they, they have a high risk of falling due to neuropathy. Usually, clinically, they have a glove and talking distribution. Usually, motor involvements are mild or late. And the symptoms are exaggerated by activity and often worse in night. And they also coexist with the autonomic neuropathy. These are the diagnostic criteria of diabetic neuropathy. When you have symptoms or signs, it is, it is possible diabetic uh, DSPN. Or if you have sign and symptom, then it is uh, probable uh, uh, DSPN. Then, then you have sign and symptom plus abnormal nerve conduction. It is a confirmed clinical uh, DSPN. Or you have only abnormal nerve conduction, there is no symptoms, no signs, then it is subclinical DSPN. Then other important uh, uh, complication is diabetic autonomic neuropathy. This is a common and under-recognized complication. Sometimes it may present uh, very weak and it, is, uh, it may be asymptomatic also. Uh, un uncontrolled hyperglycemia of a long period results in dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system. Usually it develops up more than 10 years. Uh, you have diabetes for more than 10 years, they develop this complication. Uh, and it is commonly encountered in patients predominantly small fiber neuropathy. And then these are, you all know, the symptoms depend on the organ involved. These are the symptoms when, you, when, when it affects the cardiovascular system, you get other uh, static hypertension or postural hypertension, arrhythmia, sometimes high ischemia, and reduced exercise tolerance. These are the symptoms of cardiovascular. You have GIT involvement, then you get a yearly satiety, nausea, constipation, and diarrhea. If it is affecting the genitourinary, you get erectile dysfunction, 
and neurogenic bladder uh, which is affecting the cutaneous and then you have a loss of uh, setting dry skin and heat tolerance and sometimes it affect, uh, it might cause hypoglycemic unnerved also uh, we had mentioned mainly about uh, diabetic cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy is is a major clinical concern because it has a significant mortality the, the people who have diabetic uh, neuropathy uh, it it affect the cardiovascular autonomic nerves have a increased risk of cardiac death uh, because uh, uh, of uh, silent ischemia and arrhythmia and uh, several mechanism causes cardiac death so they usually if you want to affect the uh, cardiovascular system they present with a uh, increased resting heart rate and they have a diminished heart rate response to physiological stress and in severe cases they present with also static hypertension causes postural giddiness and it has a 5 to 10 year mortality uh, of uh, in uh, 27 to 50% and it because of this um, involvement of cardiovascular system they have a diminished cardiac output and poor exercise tolerance and then uh, focal neuropathy especially diabetic mononeuropathy uh, uh, several mononeuropathies appear in greater frequency the uh, mainly the intrapen neuropathies like median nerve uh, in the risk affected carpal tunnel syndrome and ulnar neuropathy in the elbow causing cubital tunnel syndrome and 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 peroneal neuropathy in the fibula get causing a uh, foot drop and the uh, diabetic cranial mononeuropathy uh, it is uh, usually up to 1% of, uh, up to 1% develop this cranial neuropathy and uh, usually if they present with partial oculomotor uh, uh, of oculomotor palsy with the people spare their people are spared usually and uh, it is acute and self limiting mm. uh, and other nerves involved are sixth nerve and fourth nerve also occur in diabetic cranial mononeuropathy and in some cases facial palsy also okay they have a good prognosis and resolves uh, in 6 to 6 months and then mononeuropathy multiplies we all know it is a asymmetric involvement of multiple peripheral nerve uh, sometimes it, once it comes in it resembles like a peripheral neuropathy mononeuropathy multiplies you have, to, uh, have special mention because it may there may be patient with the presentation with the mononeuropathy multiplies but they may be having underlying other disease like vasculitis so you have to clinically assess this patient carefully whether it is a diabetic uh, mononeuropathy multiplies or something some other illness or especially vasculitis you have to consider whether that is the one causing this problem um another this is a form of a acute uh, diabetic uh, neuropathy complication that is diabetic lumbar sacral radicular plexus neuropathy or the uh, we call it dlrp uh, it is a most common uh, acute uh, neuropathy and it also uh, referred as diabetic amyotrophy or the di proximal diabetic neuropathy and usually it affects all the people or middle age and uh, Uh, usually associated with uh, type 2 diabetes and uh, and also it associated with weight loss uh, but it is not uh, related to glucose control or duration and uh, may present uh, to uh, present prior to the diagnosis of dm in some cases usually present as abrupt onset classically start with severe unilateral pain in back and hip or thigh spread to involve the entire limbs can involve the uh, other legs in weeks or months later and uh, usually asymmetric and uh, the it causes weakness of hip flexors and adductors and extensors and you will get to wasting of thigh and weakness involves uh, multiple root levels and peripheral nerves actually this affect a plexus roots and the peripheral nerve this pathology pathology and uh, 
the knee jerk, knee jerk and ankle jerk may be absent. And uh, symptom worse step by step progress or uh, progress manner, and it worse in eighteen months, and then they stabilize. And the majority experience a gradual improvement after the after the period of uh, eighteen to twenty four months. And some left with permanent deficits, that is foot drop. Uh, one third of the cases of weakness occurs in arm muscles, that is diabetic cervical radicular plexus neuropathy. This is another form of a uh, diabetic uh, acute complication, that is uh, diabetic thoracic polyradiculopathy. And um, symptoms are suggestive of a spinal uh, nerve root compression. They present with the abdominal pain, radicular pain. Or focal uh, triangle central loss, something cutaneous hyperesthesia. Sometimes they may be having weak focal weakness of anterior abdominal wall, and it also associated with weight loss. It may be unilateral or bilateral. Uh, sometimes it involves several adjacent dermatomes also, and this also is, is uh, recovers spontaneously in three to six months. And the other important uh, cause of uh, diabetic acute neuropathy is uh, treatment-induced neuropathy of diabetes. This is also called uh, insulin neuritis, and it is a acute, a very painful sensory neuropathy with uh, autonomic dysfunction, and it is precipitated by period of uh, intense glycemic control. If you reduce the blood sugar very quickly, and they, they may develop this. Insulin neuritis or treatment-induced neuropathy, and uh, usually start in two to six weeks after the changes of blood uh, sugar, and it correlates. The symptoms are correlating with the uh, magnitude of the reduction of HbA1c, and occurs mainly in type one, but it can also occur in type two. And uh, it is severe and refractory to treatment, and pain usually improves with the glucose control and typically resolves spontaneously within a year. But it can recur if there's a sudden uh, if you try to control the diabetes uh, very quickly. And so they recommend that you have to reduce the HbA1c one by uh, in a in a month you have to reduce one uh, uh, HbA1c by one. Then other important uh, complication is uh, diabetic neuropathy, cachexia. It is again rare, but it is closely related to uh, treatment-induced uh, neuropathy of diabetes. It also uh, present associated with uh, CO8 loss, and they may also have depression. Again, it is common in uh, all the men uh, with type 2 diabetes uh, who are on oral hypoglycemic agents. And in, uh, it also improves spontaneously in 12 to 24 months, and and some uh, end up with residual neurological deficits. These are the non-diabetic neuropathies common in diabetes, such as pressure palsy and um, uh, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy and uh, radicular plexus neuropathy. Here we are mainly mentioning. Uh, Referring to diabetic neuropathy, uh, demyelinating neuropathy, that is CIDP. Uh, the prevalence of CIDP in BM uh, studies has shown nine times higher, and usually present with the symmetric distal proximal weakness with the hyporeflexia. Progress of a uh, uh, two month is the typical presentation of the diabetic CIDP, and. Uh, and it is important to recognize CIDP because the treatment is different. You have to uh, use an immunomodulated treatment like a steroid, IVIG. So you have to diagnose correctly whether the patient has CIDP or not. And diagnosis based on typical clinical features, and not on nerve conduction findings alone. And why it severe DSPN closely resembles. CIDP electrodiagnostically. Sometimes this severe uh, neuropathy, uh, neuropathy uh, neurophysiologically resembles CIDP. That's why you have to have a typical clinical features uh, with the nerve conduction findings to uh, diagnose CIDP. Uh, 
then we will move on to one of the important section why we are talking about uh, this diabetic neuropathy this is one of the uh, problem is uh, foot ulceration how the foot ulcers cause uh, what are the predisposing factors the diabetic neuropathy and autonomic neuropathy uh, due to the, the dry fissured skin and, and loss of sweating and then diabetic people also have most of the people have a peripheral vascular disease and because of these uh, diabetic sensory and motor neuropathy they may have foot deformity and foot edema and neuropathic osteopathy these are the causes uh, for the foot ulcers ulceration the main cause is diabetic neuropathy uh, this is a uh, diabetic uh, 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 way of uh, showing the uh, foot ulceration in diabetes. You know, the diabetic neuropathy, the motor damage, sensory damage, autonomic damage can cause, uh, and then uh, limited joint mo mobility, and that uh, diabetic uh, macrovascular disease all play a part in uh, uh, foot ulceration and uh, uh, lead to foot uh, limb amputation. So diagnosis, how do you diagnose the diabetic neuropathy? Uh, uh, early diagnosis is important because if you diagnose early, then you have to have the preventive strategies, then you can prevent uh, foot ulceration and amputation. And, and sometimes uh, if, if it is autonomic neuropathy, uh, uh, it causes uh, uh, increased cardiac death. So by early diagnosis of conditions, so by that you can prevent further progression of the complication and, and thereby we can prevent the cardiac death. So any diagnosis, history. History is important. History, you know, diabetic people usually they have a symptom starting in the feet, mainly in the toes and uh, they present it in numbness or sometimes tingling sensation and spread uh, upwards and one up I, I have initially told if once it come up to mid calf or, or, or knee well, then it start in the fingertips and some people come and say that I have uh, uh, something pasted over my soul or some people say I have a when I walk, I feel something. I am walking on a cotton wool or, or carpet. Uh, like that, some people say I have severe pain on walking. There are different ways of presentation uh, uh, this uh, peripheral neuropathy. And, uh, and, and at the same time, you know, whether they have postural symptoms and uh, whether they have uh, erectile dysfunction or uh, signs or symptoms of uh, autonomic involvement. And then examination, uh, usually they have decreased sensation of the leg. Uh, you test uh, the light touch uh, or perception by monofilament, 10 gram monofilament. Monofilament is a symbol and uh, a quick way of screening uh, for uh, diabetic neuropathy. And we check the pinprick sensation, uh, temperature, and the vibration proprioception. All we check uh, in diabetic people's food and look for the reflexes of reduce or absent and, uh, and look for the signs of uh, peripheral neuropathy that is absent hair uh, and the shiny skin and look for foot ulcers, blisters and the deformity of the food. This is a way, way uh, they examine, you know, uh, monofilament test where you, uh, in the monofilament, you uh, keep all the, all the skin perpendicularly and ask the patient to close his eyes or his or her eyes and keep the um, monofilament particularly over the skin and, and press until it bends and keep it uh, there for one second and then ask uh, whether they can see it. Uh, these are the sites they have shown that uh, you have to test, especially in the metatarsal head of first, third, and fifth uh, metatarsal heads. And, uh, plantar surface of uh, uh, big toe. If they didn't feel in one or two places, then they have uh, diabetic uh, uh, neuropathy and they have increased uh, chance of getting uh, plant ulceration or foot ulceration. And then investigations, uh, especially neurophysiological studies, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Patrona has uh, 
told almost all uh, diagnostic uh, clues to diagnose uh, diabetic neuropathy also. Uh, so usually, um, uh, this is a neurophysiology by nerve conduct is a most sensible and re reliable and reproducible measurement of nerve dysfunction. And usually in diabetes, when we request uh, nerve conduction, usually if you think, uh, if this is a typical clinical presentation, if you have a typical clinical presentation, like they, they have uh, symptom charting the feet and uh, after a uh, few months or few, after a few years, it started uh, symptoms in the hands. And uh, then if the symptoms are typically of diabetic distal type of uh, symmetric neuropathy, the uh, nerve conduction study may not be necessary. But if they have a typical clinical presentation, like uh, you have a motor predominant neuropathy or you have asymmetry in the clinical signs and symptoms, or they have a proximal more than distal, or if they're presenting very accurately, then you have to uh, request for a nerve conduction and to make a diagnosis. Sometimes there, there are some patient with diabetes maybe coexisting uh, some other illness like vasculitis or B12 deficiency or alcoholism or paraneoplast uh, uh, neuropathy. So we have, you think of a atypical uh, presentation request and out induction. Otherwise, it is a straightforward, simple, and uh, typical neuro uh, the, uh, presentation of diabetic neuropathy. Uh, no conduction may not be necessary. And usually, we see axonal de degeneration in the form of decreased amplitude in the sensory nerve action potential. And, uh, in, uh, in, uh, and the radio CMAP in severe cases. And uh, as Prof mentioned, uh, it, in small fiber neuropathy, the nerve conduction is normal. Uh, I have to mention uh, neuroimaging. In neuroimaging, also, it is uh, cranial neuroneuritis. You have sick nerve, third nerve. Sometimes we do the neuroimaging. Or you suspect DLRPN. Uh, again, we suspect uh, maybe coexisting lumbar uh, pathology. In that case, we have to do the uh, neuroimaging of the lumbar spine. And it is a diagnosis of DLRPN is very important because otherwise, unnecessarily, they end up with the surgery. So if the DLRPN is um, uh, usually resolved on its own. So they may not need, uh, sometimes they may be associated few uh, disc. So the, the diagnosis of DLRPN is very much important to prevent the uh, surgery, lumbar laminectomy. And then treatment. Uh, treatment, of course, there's no, currently there's no treatment exists that conveniently reverse the diabetic neuropathy or, or, or modify the uh, diabetic neuropathy. The, the, the single and most important uh, thing is improved glycemic control and treatment of restrictors. Of course, diet and exercise, lifestyle intervention like uh, diet, you know, healthy diet and exercise uh, prevent it prevent the diabetic neuropathies. And then uh, control of uh, neuropathic pain. We have uh, several ways of controlling the neuropathic pain in the uh, diabetes, tri tricyclic uh, and depressant and uh, and SNRI, SNRI and anticonvulsant and narcotic or non narcotic medication and capsaicin, a local application. And uh, then the, there are uh, dietary supplements that is alpha lipoic acid also. But uh, alpha lipoic acid uh, has shown it has symptomatic benefit. There's no uh, effect on the disease uh, modification. And then you have to uh, counsel uh, the patient about uh, food care. Then uh, the treatment, uh, mainly the symptom control of neuropathic pain, and uh, we use topical capsaicin and sometimes transdermal lidocaine, and then uh, and, uh, anti convulsant dra drugs, mainly pregabalin and gabapentin. And the FDA approved as a first line treat uh, treatment for neuropathic, diabetic neuropathic pain is the pregabalin. And other drug is SNRI, Venlafaxin, or 
duloxetine. Duloxetine also one of the uh, important drug in diabetic neuropathies. And, uh, and tricyclic antidepressant, very cheap drug that is amitriptyline. And the narcotic, especially tramadol, sometimes in severe cases, we may have to use uh, if the patient has very severe symptoms. And treatment of autonomic uh, dysfunction, it is targeted uh, uh, mainly at the organ system involved, the cardiac system, whether it is a cardiovascular system involved, whether it's a gastrointestinal system involved, and whether it's a genital urinary system involved. Depend on the symptoms, we treat according to. You have a uh, genital urinary symptom with a erectile dysfunction, you use uh, um, uh, what you call uh, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, and uh, and cardiovascular system you have problem with postural hypertension uh, you advise them how to you know uh, you, you should not get up very quickly and to, and you have to walk um, uh, and uh, not only that and we avoid some of the drugs which causes postural hypertension And the next is the food care. This is very important because it is when you have good food care, then you can prevent the food ulceration and it, in turn, it uh, prevent the food amputation. And we always instruct the patients, uh, uh, you know, keep their feet clean and dry at all times. And uh, we always say, uh, say wearing shoes, all, always wear the shoes and, 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 and to protect the feet. And, and at least not to walk barefoot and avoid high impact exercise. And also the attention where it is, should, the shoes should be properly fitting shoes. And, and, and not only that, they have to inspect their feet daily for callus or infections, abrasions or blisters. Sometimes they don't feel any pain. So sometimes they will have infection unless if they see it, they can't find it. So, so that's the important thing. They have to advise them every day. They have to look at the uh, feet, look for uh, infection, abrasion, and blisters. And not only that, though, at, at when they come to the clinic, physicians should infect the feet. And uh, then we have to reinforce the importance of foot care to the patient. And if you have ulcer, or infection or deformities, we have to treat them aggressively, aggressively to prevent this, uh, uh, to prevent the uh, diabetic uh, foot ulcers, which lead to um, amputation. You all know the uh, diabetic uh, uh, neuropathy is a common complication of diabetes, and it has multiple risk factors. And uh, commonest type of neuropathy is uh, distal symmetric uh, polyneuropathy. Uh, and uh, diabetic autonomic neuropathy is associated with uh, cardiac death. And uh, food ulceration lead to amputation. So that is an important thing of diabetes, uh, neuropathy, and prevention. And uh, screening, uh, screening for neuropathy in all diabetic patients is important and tight control of diabetes and other risk factors reduce the development of neuropathy. Uh, at present, no proven treatment available to reverse the neuropathy. And the treatment focus on slowing the progression of the diabetes neuropathy and the management of pain and prevention of complication. And then the last not least, and uh, patient education and food care is essential in preventing neuropathy uh, complications and amputations.